The BCA Hub video series brings together the latest video tech tips on wheel hubs, bearings, and seals, featuring the experts you trust. Brought to you by BCA Bearings by NTN. Learn more at bcabearings.com. So Matt, this is a Gen 1 in your world, or a cartridge or a press fit wheel bearing. This takes up a lot of time to do, and it's kind of hard to do it on flat rate if you don't know what you're doing in the first place. So what are some of the big mistakes that we see in our industry of technicians when they try to install one of these? What are the, what are the tips we can provide them with? Well, first is disassembly. I mean, that, that can be a nightmare with the snap rings and the rust and, and the corrosion. So getting it apart is always gonna be the challenge. But when you go to reinstall it, uh, the number one thing that we see uh, as an error is most of the applications are going to have a magnetic encoder for the ABS and the other side may look the same or have a metal shield on it but pressing this in and orienting it the right way in towards the engine or out towards the wheel is going to cause an ABS light to come on or stay off that's our number one issue that we have with people installing these incorrectly for some of the newbies out there their main concern if they're installing it properly when they're first doing the job, what should they do before they start ripping into it? Before they start disassembly, yeah. is I would take an assessment to see if you need just the bearing or if you need a repair kit. Okay. In a lot of cases, you're gonna take the dust cap off, you're gonna see an axle nut that's corroded beyond belief. You're gonna see that the wheel flange is completely uh, rusty as well and maybe pitted. Uh, the snap ring that retains the wheel bearing cartridge into the knuckle is going to be rusted and probably going to break when you take it apart. So in the rust belt, you might want to be careful to make sure you've got all the parts that you may need uh, to do the job. And BCA offers those as well as the bearing uh, alone. You know, you mentioned the rust belt, you know, the rust belt's also the pothole belt. Mm -hmm. Should a technician be concerned at the knuckle itself and the bore goes into of it being square or other issues with it? You do, but you're generally not, I, I can't imagine the pothole that's gonna distort the hole that this goes into the knuckle. There might be other damage on other parts of the knuckle, but generally what you're gonna see is when you press this out, um, you're gonna see rust pitting, depending on if it's a metal or steel knuckle that is coming out of, you might have some material transfer, so the new bearing might go in looser. So you've gotta be, be cognizant of that too. So just a general you know, visual, once you get the bearing pressed out, just take a look and see if there's any big pits or cracks or any kind of uh, distortions that might raise some alarms. You know, one of my tips I always tell about doing these is from my own frustration. When I get started on the job and I start either looking at the press or I start looking at the kit that I have for doing it on the vehicle, is making sure that everything's there before I start tearing that vehicle apart and disabling it in my bay. Yeah, depending on how you want to do it. If you want to do it on vehicle with the hub tamer type of uh, bearing extractor, or if you're just going to take the knuckle off and, and take it over to the 20-ton shop press and, and struggle with it there and, and the spacers. But uh, I would not recommend this as a in-your-driveway type of repair unless you're sure that you've got the right on-the-vehicle hub tamer type of uh, adapters that are going to fit the specific bearing. So I'm a technician. How do I know that I put this in the right way, that the encoder ring is facing the, the, the correct in board or outboard? Well, uh, the, the, the easiest way to do, if you don't have any uh, magnetic cards or any uh, the high-tech stuff, is you just take a simple paper clip, anything that, that's going to be metal, and you're going to attach it to the magnetic encoder and it's going to stick. That's the side that you want to be facing to the wheel speed sensor. The other side, it, it'll just fall off. In some rare cases, just to eliminate any kind of possibility of installing it incorrectly, we may have the encoder on both sides. That just eliminates the possibility. This has got a metal shield, this has got an encoder with a rubber seal. So in this case, it's not possible. So just making sure that a paper clip fits. If you don't have that, some iron filings on there might work. But that is the number one key that I would say, if you get this in, you get it installed, you reinstall and press in the wheel flange into it to the same depth that it was when you came out. So it may be, uh, you know, in some cases it's gonna be flush with this, in some cases it might be recessed. But just take a look and see where does that flange stop and maybe take some measurements, take some pictures, just to be sure until you get familiar with it and comfortable doing that type of job.
So if I get it in backwards, can I just turn it around and take it apart? No, no. Once you go to uninstall this, it will separate and, it, and it's no good. So uh, you will destroy it taking it back out. Oh, thank you, Matt. Those are some really informative things to remember mm -hmm. when working on one of these, which I've seen become a little bit more common on Ford, Toyota, even some Nissan vehicles. So I think, hope this helps the technicians out there. I hope so too. Thank you very much.